enough to record. Yes, all right, so let me continue. For the background noise, see that there are no disturbances like background noises or people moving around to avoid distractions. Um, tools, gadget, and internet. Test equipment, laptop, microphone, and speakers before joining the meeting. Choose a spot with unlimited and strong internet connection. Profile display name, choose the suitable profile picture. Use a complete name to present yourself in an actual meeting. Identify yourself when you speak. Mute your microphone. Always mute yourself while you are not speaking. And mute yourself and speak only when it is your chance to speak. Be polite, do not interrupt. If you wish to speak or have any points or motion to raise, raise your hand. Raise your hand. The facilitator host will recognize you and allow you to speak. A video on and off. Some of our virtual sessions are required to keep the video on at all times. You can switch off the video if you face bandwidth issues. Do not toggle your webcam between on and off switches. The resource speakers conducting the webinar feel like talking to an empty room. While some of our sessions require turning off the cam until you are instructed to share. Question and answer. Questions or queries to resource person, facilitator, or fellow participants should be sent using a chat option. Keep your question minimal and on the topic. As a webinar participant, it, this is the best time to show respect for people's time. Be straightforward and time conscious. Dress appropriately. Make yourself presentable for our TESOL training. Dress professionally. Mind your body language and opinion. Be attentive and a careful observer. Engage, contribute, useful and helpful comments in the chat box. Be prepared for technical difficulties. In case of technical glitches on your video and audio, leave the meeting and rejo rejoin. Don't leave the meeting without informing the host, thank the facilitator, hosts and speakers before leaving the meeting. Remind us, in case of power interruptions, please give us at least three minutes to resume the session. No part of the resource presence presentation shall be reproduced in any form, print, digital, etc., for purposes in violation of intellectual property rights. We encourage participants to take notes of the speaker's presentation or, or if the resource persons will provide a presentation, it shall not be used for any commercial purposes or whatsoever. Through participating in this webinar, we hereby consent to Straps International to take photos or screen cap of the participants joining the Zoom call for purposes of documentation and promotion in accordance to Data Privacy Act of 2012. Right. At this time, we will have the uh, we will have the doxology by his servant, Pastor Rudel. I Luma to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Let us pray. Our merciful Lord and Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, your love is indeed beautiful, manifesting itself in your vast works and creations. Make it known to the entire world that you are the almighty, unchangeable, and living God. You are the source, sustainer, and enabler of all life on this planet. You can build kingdoms and depose dominions. We come in awe of you, our dear God Almighty. O oh Lord, forgive us for all our trespasses and sins, for words, thoughts, and deeds. Please cleanse us of filth and in iniquity so that we may come to you a purpose and sincere heart. Abhor selfishness and ungodliness. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us, as well as the opportunities to enjoy the life we live. Thank you for bringing us together for a specific reason. Thank you for the organizers. Thank you for the participants. Thank you for the availability of all the facilitators. 
we beg you to bring success into our hands. Let everything we do bring wealth to the entire world, not just to ourselves. Father God, we hope that you will bless our speakers as they share their knowledge and wisdom with us. Give each participant a responsive heart so that anything they learn can be used in their daily lives. May everyone be modest and willing to be trained to be able to teach others as well. We recognize and give reverence to you. God, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit's work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Sang awit ng Pilipinas. To continue, may I call on Ms. Carmela N. Salenga, President of Strategy International, for the opening remarks. Okay. Thank you, Mom GJ, for your introduction. Good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, and I would like to acknowledge John Suti, Reverend Attorney Stephen Olkisa. Assistant Dean Michael D. Demi Aparacho, Dr. Roxanne Rubric Romerosa, and dedicated teacher participants, fellow officers of STRAP and PRISM International, welcome to the opening of the first of the three part series of our 120 diesel training program. I would like to express my deepest gratitude the school administrators of University of Mindanao for giving us the opportunity to collaborate with them on this momentous event. It is with great pleasure and enthusiasm that I extend a warm welcome for each and every one of you to this distinguished gathering focused on the enhancement of communication skill, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, cooperation, and capability development in the realm of English and language acquisition. As educators, we are entrusted with the noble responsibility of shaping minds, fostering growth and nurturing talents. On our role extend uh, far beyond the boundaries of conventional classroom it transcends into the realm of inspiration, motivation, and empowerment. Today, as we convene to delve into the intricacy of TESOL methodology and practices, we embark on a journey of discovery and enlightenment that holds the potential to redefine the landscape of language education. Communication stands as the cornerstone of our profession. It is true effective communication that we bridge the chasm between diverse cultures, ideology, and perspectives. In this dynamics and interconnected world, the ability to communicate proficiently in English open doors to limitless opportunities and facilitate global dialogue. Throughout this program, we shall explore 
innovative strategies to hone our communication skills, thereby empowering our students to articulate their thoughts with clarity and precision. Collaboration lies at the heart of the pedagogical excellence. As educator, we must strive to cultivate an environment of mutual respect, trust, and cooperation within our classrooms. By fostering collaboration learning experiences, we may not only instill essential social skills, but also cultivate a sense of collective responsibility and empathy amongst our students. Through collaborative endeavors, we shall unravel the power of synergy and harness it to create transformative learning experiences. Critical thinking serves as a compass that guides our intellectual pursuits in an age inundated with information our student must learn to navigate to the labyrinth of data with discernment and acumen through the rigorous inquiry, analysis, and evaluation. We shall equip ourselves with tools to nurture critical thinking skills among our students, empowering them to question, challenge, and innovate. Creativity fuels the engine of progress and innovation. And as educators, it is incumbent upon us to foster a creative ec ecosystem where imagination thrives and originality flourishes. By embracing diverse teaching methodologies, incorporating multimedia tools, and encouraging out-of-the-box thinking, we shall inspire a student to unleash their creative potential and chart their frontier in language acquisition. Cooperation transcends and confines of individual achievement. In, in, it embodies the spirit of collective growth and share success. By fostering culture of cooperative among our students, we cultivate a supportive learning community and environment where each member contributes to a greater good. Through collaborative projects, peers' feedbacks, and team-based activities, we shall nurture a sense of camaraderie, inclusivity within our classrooms, and paving the way for holistic development. And we have a responsibility to ourselves that we need to carry. As educators, we bear the profound responsibility nurturing the intellectual and emotional and social cap capacities of our student. Through continuous professional development like this, uh, reflective practices and personalized instruction we shall embark on the journey of self-improvement and growth, equipping ourselves with the tools and strategies to unlock the full potential of our students. In conclusion, I extend my heart heartfelt gratitude to each and every one uh, of your unwavering dedication, passion, and commitment to the field of English language acquisition. Together, let us embark in this transformative journey and armed with a shared vision of excellence and a fervent determination to make difference in, our, in the lives of our students, in the community, and finally, the global community. Thank you very much uh, for listening and have a nice day. Thank you, Ma'am Carmela. Let us start our day with another inspirational message from Dr. Michael Demia Perocho, Assistant Dean, College of Arts and Sciences Education. Good morning, Doc. Thank you very much, Ms. GJ. To our speakers, Dr. Suthi and Attorney Stephen, and the Chair of Languages Discipline, Dr. Edwin L. Nebria, our organizers from STRAPS Prism International, 
Of course, our UM faculty and other participants in this virtual meeting, good morning. First, I would like to extend my genuine appreciation to Straps International for providing the University of Mindanao Languages Discipline this training series. Surely, this will help us become more qualified to teach the English language to our university students. The same gratitude is also extended to the University of Mindanao Management for supporting our faculty members in this professional development journey. The teaching of English language in the Philippines has been beset with countless problems, not only in terms of teacher training, but also of pathways, resources, and foci. These common unresolved problems are continually devastating the quality of English pedagogy in the country. This is the reason many of us are seeking opportunities to improve our skill set and knowledge to incessantly hone our craft in language teaching. This TESOL training series with a lineup of highly qualified resource persons is truly a blessing for all of us because this will equip us with an in-depth knowledge of English language pedagogy and skills in teaching the target language to speakers of other languages, including our university students. One advantage of undergoing this is that we are multiplying better skills and exemplary practices to handle language learners, not only Filipinos, but also other nationalities. This is specifically ap applicable to our language classrooms where teachers need cross-culture approaches and methodologies that will ensure holistic language learning environments. This three Sunday training may be a sacrifice of our only rest day in a week, but it will surely be a fulfilling experience as we get to listen to our speakers, interact with our fellow participants, and of course, apply our knowledge and skills in real life classroom situations. This will further enhance our teaching skills and allow us to realize that there are still aspects of us in terms of instruction that may still be honed. Let's consider this experience as a whetstone that will make us more prepared to revolutionize ESL classrooms and transform learners in the future. Mom Precious and I underwent the same TESOL training under Straps International, and I can say that the experience was really helpful and impactful in attaining an in-depth understanding of teaching English to speakers of other languages. As incumbent educators, we value excellence so let's continue shaping our craft and become expert or skillful in language teaching. And let's all think that we are put in this virtual room for reasons, to upskill ourselves and improve the quality of language instruction globally. All the best to all the participants, most especially the UM faculty members, and I hope you will enjoy the entire ESOL training process. Once again, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Um, there is always a notable element in every educational consortia. Let us indulge ourselves to the sphere of intuitive advancement in the academe as we featured speakers will empower us to the realm of cognitive breakthrough. But before we proceed to our first keynote speaker, let me emphasize this very important matter to all of you. For everyone's information, our esteemed speakers will focus on their expertise, sharing insights relevant to the phases outlined in our curriculum. Each speaker will cover two pertinent areas of focus. Please do not be confused. If one speaker will, one speaker discusses phases seven and nine, while another covers phases two and four, and so on. This approach allows our speakers to provide a breakthrough knowledge within their respective fields of proficiency. Additionally, it's essential to synchronize the availability of our international speakers with our webinar schedule. So as a result, the sequence of our curriculum from phase one to 10 will be reorganized accordingly. For further information and inquiries, please feel free to contact our administrative team and we will surely, um, we will ensure your concerns are addressed promptly. So our first keynote speaker is from the line of Smiles, Thailand. And to introduce our speaker, may I call in Pastor Udil Luma, Straps International Vice President. All right, thank you, MJJ, for our keynote speaker. Uh, I would like to read his bio note. He is a graduate uh, 
of Doctor of Philosophy, major in English language teaching at Assumption University. He graduated Master of Arts, majoring in Business English for International Communication at Srina Karin Roth uh, University, and also a graduate of Master of Business Administration, majoring in International Business Management at Durakit Pandit University, and a graduate of Bachelor of Education, major major in educational technology and communication from Sukhothai Tamatirat Open University. He's also a graduate of Bachelor of Arts majoring in English from Dura Kipandit University. And uh, he completed certificate in English for tourism from Sukhothai Tamatirat Open University. And also completed a certificate in English for teacher from Sukhothai Tamatirat Open University. He also uh, completed a certificate in education from Pranakon Rajabat University and a certificate in education from Sukhothai Tamatirat Open University. In 2001, at present, Vice Dean for College of Teacher Education at Pranakon Rajabat University. He is also a school director at Wat Prasimahadhat Secondary Demonstration School, Rajapat Pranakon University. He is a reviewer of the Canadian Center of Science and Education, CCSE, English Language Teaching. And at present, he is a committee member, member of the Graduate Diploma Program in Teaching Profession, College of Teacher Education, Pranakon Rajapat University. And at the same time, he's a supervisor of student teachers for batch 28 and 29, of the Graduate Diploma Program in Teaching Profession, College of Teacher Education, Pranakon Rajabat University. Please help me welcome the man of the hour, Dr. Suti Kamkel. Sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Ajahn. Good morning. Good morning from Thailand. Uh, thank you for the organization that gave me an opportunity to be here. And the moderator said that all of us are the teacher. So I just, I would like to clarify how, if you would like to be a teacher here in Thailand, or maybe you are a student would like to be a teacher in Thailand. My topic today is boosting test score from daily work routine to school-based practice. I would like to say that in Thailand, we also have a lot of technical term, theory, and project and campaign. Right now, they mention about best practice, how to make your school to meet the standard of the national level. Now, we would like you, all of you, to know about that. And I'm very proud that you are the good teacher right now, I hope that. And you are happy with your job, like me. I have been a teacher for more than 20 years, and I think that is my job, is my dream job. And I also would like to be a teacher in the future also. This is the reason that you become a teacher, right? And I would like um, all of you to- Dr. Suti, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but. Uh, would you mind to make your presentation into its maximized mode so everybody could see it? Maximize? Yes, please. Here? Um, so if you toggle your cursor at the bottom. Because right now we can see two slides. Oh, la. Yes, right. Is, is it okay right now? Uh, can you make it into full screen, please? Full screen. Yeah. Uh, John, okay, play, play the slide, na kang. Okay, my. Um, my, 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 my. Not yet, not yet, uh, John. Uh, I think the option is at the bottom. Have you um? Can 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 you use uh the PowerPoint that I sent you? Oh, sure, yes. Okay, so let me have that for you so that everybody can see. We don't want to miss any of your presentations, so I think it's better for us to mm. uh, have it in full screen. Okay, please give me a sec. 
All right, so let me share my screen now. All right, so I'm going to start from the very top. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can everybody see this slide? Yes, madam. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Go ahead, please, Dr. Siti. Oh, so you are the one who clicked for me, right? Yes, sir. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Same as yesterday. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next come. Next. 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 <clears throat> Next cap, next slide. One more? Yeah. All right. Oh, I haven't seen my slides. It's, it show only the first page. Uh, Mom GJ, uh, the slide didn't move. Thank you. How about this one? Am I on the right page? It's still at the first page, Mom GJ. You're still at the first page. Thank you. Oh, really? Oh. So it means to say this slide doesn't move? Yes, exactly. Thank you. Okay. Um, hang on. So let, let me do it one more time. So Ajahn Sati, you are now on your sixth slide, correct? Hmm. Six slide, okay. Um, yes. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. All right, okay. But right now we are on the third screen. Oh. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, this one. Can you see your presentation now? Uh, Mom GJ, it's still in the uh, general thumbnails. Yes, but how about this time? Yes, Is it on it's full okay. screen mode? Okay. Agent Suti, am I on the right page? On the third? No. Backward. The, to the third. Backwards. Please tell me if I am on the right page now. Correct? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, here. Oh, I'm, this, is, this is the right one, correct? Yeah, this is the right one. Okay. Okay. This is the lesson that we would like to be a teacher. Just really go back in the past and memorize that. This is the lesson that you would like to be a teacher or not. So please tell your student that. What is the purpose that you would like to be a teacher? From the statistics, number one, you would like to make a difference in child life or you would like to share your learning and teaching. Or the third one, you would like to, reach, uh, to make your student to reach their potential. For me, the lesson that I would like to be a teacher is in the statistic number two. I would like to pass my knowledge and experience to my student. And the second one, I would like to work with a student. I think it's really happy to work with a student every day because they are lovely and they, they desire to love. They need to, they need to learn every day. And the last one, they love, do love to work with the student. So you have to ask your student that, what is the lesson? What are the lessons that they would like to be a teacher? Next. Next. <laughs> Mom GJ, Mom next GJ. slide. <laughs> yes, actually, I just think you're at the right track when you first show your slide. Uh, uh, the only thing is that you need to click on the maximize mode and uh, you, you you didn't show the 
the the maximize mode down below. Actually, there is a uh, an icon I, down I, below. Can, 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 you hear? can you see that? Yes, yes, I can really right, see. Agent. Okay, okay. Yeah, please go ahead with your presentation. I think ah, that oh. is fine. Yes. Okay. 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 Agent, so take, can we use your mouse and place no. down below? Have you seen 100% screen down below? Have you seen there? Agent, and, have, I think for this one, I think it's okay. Uh, okay. It's easier okay, for us. Proceed. Thank you. Okay. So I read to say that it's not easy to become a teacher. Why? Actually, we have a lot of responsibilities to do. For example, you have to know a lot of the content. You have to know about your student time and you have to know about the curriculum. Because every five or 10 years, the curriculum always change from the present and you have to catch up the new knowledge every year. You have also to plan the instruction to meet the student needs. You have to give the appropriate instruction in the classroom also. And the important or the difficult one for you as you are a teacher is you have to check your student work. A lot of teachers always assign a lot of work, but do not give any feedback to students. It's not okay. You have to give the feedback. If they have the question, you have to answer the question to a student. You have to clarify every step to your student. Also, you have to provide a safe and comfortable learning environment to your student. Do not force them to learning, force them to study. You have to push or push them to study. And the second one for you, if you would like to be a good teacher, you have to communicate well, clarify the explanation, to answer the question and to be, if they would like to consult you, you have to communicate well. You have to be the professionalism, like a model, you have to be a good one. And the most important, you have to increase student in achievement, especially academic or behavior, because a lot of parents expect from the school or university. But, there are many reasons that the teacher right now are quitting their job. I'm not sure that all of us are thinking about it or not. For the example, from statistic number one, you will think about personal life reason, but I think it's not, it's really common, but I think the popular one is the number, uh, the third one, you dissatisfy with school assessment or school policy. If you not feel okay with your university, your school, this is the first, I think the first reason that you would like to be the job. And also right now, you dis dissatisfy with administration, teaching of any student. And for the statistic number two, if you are the teacher, the reason that you would like to quit is you feel burned out because you have to work from the morning until the evening. Maybe it's consume your energy all day. And from the US worker, they show that the worker or the job, especially the teacher from kindergarten to 12, grade 12 student, they are the job that always burn out one because you take care of the student. Uh, I would like to say that in Thailand, if you teach a high school student, there will be about 45 or 50 students in the classroom. How can you manage the classroom, especially English language? How can you improve them? This is the real right, I think. Everyone will agree with me. At night, we planning. In the morning, we explain everything to our students. In the afternoon, we collect their work assignment. All year, we encourage our students to study, to learn, to do the activity. And all of our life of the teacher, we are stressing. We feel stressed all day because we think a lot, teaching, department job, school job, 
and various activity. This is our future job. And one of the requirements that you would like to be a, a teacher, especially you are the teacher in the university, is the doing research. You are required especially to public your research. And a lot of teachers are willing to become a researcher. We do not want to do the research. Especially me, also me, I don't want to do the research, but from now, I set my goal to the research. A lot of, a lot of teachers don't want to do the research because number one, it takes longer time, we think. We think that Maybe it will take only three months, but maybe it lasts for one year or two years. The second one, it takes a lot of personal time. Teaching, correct the homework, and you also have to do the research. It takes your personal time. And sometimes you have to work with others, and they are not good collaborators. It will make you headache. And some paper not published. Because there are two types of the, the, the researcher. The first one, who do the research because you must do the research. The second one, who do the research and design to public the research. So for the first group, if someone forced you to do the research, you won't publish it because the paper is not qualified enough for the, for the publisher. But the second one, you will be. Uh, since I am a reviewer for the journal, a lot of research that's sent to the publisher, there are a lot of problems. For some, for example, the lack of research component. They just only do the research and send to the public and pay the money and expect that it will be published. Sometimes I have to collect them and send them back to collect again. So if you would like to do the research, just follow, follow the step of the research. And it's hard to keep up with the rapidly changing world. For me, I have been a teacher for 20 years or more than. I have to do the research every year. Right now, I cannot think about any topic anymore because I do a lot. So how can I do my research? I try to attend the seminar or webinar about English language teaching and try to get up the, lab, the changing field of the teaching and try to collect or set up the new topic for my research. This is the way that you can find the, the, uh, the topic of the research. And the, and the last one is not value because you don't want to do the research. You are forced to do so the result is not okay, it's not value. In the past, I don't want to do any research anymore. I think it's hard. But from now and future, from now on, I am a research advocate. I set my goal. Each year, I have to publish at least two papers each year. Why? If you publish more, you can use the result for doing any job. For example, as, especially when I am a director of the school, I also the, uh, the lecturer for the bachelor or master degree. They will ask the first question, teacher, where is your research? Where are your research topic? Two or three years past, we would like to know, we would like to see that. If you don't have you have no opportunity to teach in the university. At least one paper per year and must publish in the journal. International journal or national journal is okay, but you have to publish your journal, your, your paper. And the most common about the topic that we do it, especially we are the English teacher, it will be about student academic achievement, about the test or examination. We try to put many methodology, theory, technical term to do the research, but the result, we would like to see the student academic achievement. 
let's see and let's share from my experience. I want to show you about the EPI 2023. They will say about EP English Proficiency Index. This is the last year. You can see that the Philippines ranking number 20. Your English proficiency is very high. But on the country, you can see Thailand, 101. We got very low proficiency. Why? Number one, we have 45. There are 45 students in the classroom. And we can use only English in the classroom because outside, we just only speak Thai. We are, Thai, we are in Thai context. We don't speak any English anymore outside the classroom. But also in the classroom, we speak a little bit because we have one teacher and 45 students. We have no time to speak. That's why our English is very low proficiency. If you would like to be a teacher here, or your student would like to be a teacher here, you must have to know that we are in very poor standard of English, especially in many schools. If we talk about the TESOL, in Thailand, we teach English as the foreign language because the first language is Thai. The foreign language is the English, or maybe Chinese or Japanese, opposite to the Philippines because you teach English as the second language. But I do not compare with the mother tongue or the first language. In Thailand, people, uh, parents' opinion think that they would like to send their, their child to study with the person or teacher from the native speaker. But I read to say that there are a lot of Filipinos teacher in Thailand because we accept, we welcome you to be here. And since I am a teacher, I also work the Philippine teacher. We are a bit like the same culture, the same custom and the same behavior. We can talk each other it's easier than to speak with the native speaker. So you are welcome to be here. When we talk about TESOL, I'd like to say somewhat about ELT, English Language Teaching. This is the curriculum in Thailand. We also have a lot of curriculum to follow. 21st century, activity learning, problem-based learning, multiple intelligence, core competency. We have to follow a lot of curriculum. And right now, we also have the problem about the learning material. In the past, we used card, fetch card, for chart, and booklet. But right now, we have to turn to the visual resources of internet, especially the material from the TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and also X. We have to change. And right now, I just discovered that the generation gap is the problem. I think most of us are Gen X, maybe very now. And our student will be Gen Z, and in the near future, Gen Alpha. They think a lot, they think different from us. Many Thai students think that, why do we have to study in the school or the university? Because there are many knowledge, there are many uh, reasons on the YouTube, you can find anything on YouTube. How can you differentiate yourself from the YouTube or Facebook? And the last one, we have to think about the, how can we manage or handle the cash flow? Because the trend in the future will be micro-learning, lifelong learning, soft skill, digital literacy, hybrid learning since the COVID-19. And special educational needs. In the past, when we study, we have one, there are one teacher in the classroom, all students listen to the teacher. But right now, you have to separate student depends on their needs. This is a problem also.
Um, for me, I would like to show that the topic that I do the research, I will pick up for my daily work routine. Why? It won't affect your work. If you do it in your, your, your daily work and you just need to develop it to be the research here. I would like to say a little bit about general information about Thai education here. We are five categories for Thai education. Number one, peaceful education. Number two, elementary education. Number three, lower secondary education. Number four, upper secondary demons, uh, education. And number five, higher education. For number five, it means about vocational school, bachelor degree, master and doctoral degree. If you would like to be a teacher here and would like to study or to teach in bachelor, master, and PhD, you have to finish PhD only. In Thai University, we do not accept bachelor or master degree to teach in the university. Except, except some major, for example, physics, economics that some people educate but most of us we are required to finish phd and if you would like to teach in preschool education elementary lower secondary upper secondary you are required you must have a teaching license teaching certificate if you don't have you will be just only the assistant teacher. So for me, I teach in a hub, upper secondary education. I have a teaching license. When I teach bachelor and master degree, I have a PhD level. So I can pass the qualification, qualification of the university and school. So that's why it's not easy to be a teacher. And there are two types of school in Thailand. Government school, private school, and university demonstration school. University demonstration school, like a laboratory for the university, they will send the student teacher to work at the university demonstration school. And I would like to show that if you work for the government, you will face a lot of problems because the government will control the school. If you work for the private school, the manager or the owner of the school will force you to do something. But if you work for the demonstration school, the president of the university will control you. So the step of the control is less than the government and private school. And we also have a lot of program for Thai students. We have the boarding school, Thai program, international program, bilingual program, English program, mini English program, and intensive English program. That's why we need a lot of foreign teachers right now. And Filipino teacher coming number first, number first for time. We welcome you to be here, but you have to be qualified first. And to meet the standard of the educational in Thailand. A lot of students, especially grade six, grade nine, and grade 12 students, they have to sit for the ordinary national educational test or ODEM because it will evaluate the quality of the education compared with the national level. If you are the English teacher, you have to prepare your lesson and you have to push your student to meet the standard of national level. Let's see for my case study. I and my colleague try to set up the English teaching framework to improve grade 12 students for the ONET test. From 28, uh, 2008 to 2020, why? Because after 2021, there is no test anymore because of the COVID pandemic. 
So I just collect the data for 2008 to 2020. And how can we do that? Here, this is my school. What was the secondary demonstration to Panacola Japan University? We, there are about 900 students in my school and about 35 teachers here. The head of our school is Panacol Lachapat University by the president. And we also under the college of teacher education and the school. This is the organization chart of my school. So it would be okay for us because we are just like an autonomous department. If I have any problem, I will consult, I will ask the suggestion from the president at the dean of teaching college. We don't ask any opinion from other people. I just ask from the dean and the president. So we also set up the school curriculum myself. If there are 100% for the curriculum, I will follow the national curriculum only 20%. And the last, we will set up our curriculum to meet my student needs. And the management is very good, very lucky me because I can do anything that pursue, that boost our student to be the good one. We can do anything because the university and the teaching college department try to support our school. The problem that we think about the test or we try to think and to try the solution. Here, this is the background. The honor score of my students have fallen many years. Most of them got 55 out of 100 marks. I don't know that. My students are poor or the test is very difficult. But the Ministry of, the, of, the, of Education always say that the test is very easy. Follow from the book, follow from the curriculum. But I found out that it's very difficult. And the second one, our department, English department, try to promote the honest score. Because the score is not stable. Some year is higher, some year are falling, are lower. So we try to do everything, especially the uh, framework to treat our students. And we try to compare the honest score with only the university demonstration school, only. We do not compare the score with the secondary educational service area offices too. Provincial level, regional level, national level, we do not compare with because our school is a bit middle standard. We will compare among the university school level. And we expect that the score must be 1% higher. So grade 10 to 12, we have three major, science mathematics, English mathematics, English Chinese and Japanese. There are six teachers in foreign languages department, Dr. Shayade, I myself, Dr. Suti, Ms. Tutiyapon, Ms. Aifa, Mr. Rudil, and Ms. Chang. I mark the, uh, the, the star because she does only came to our school two years. So now she is in the process of our department. In the past, Dr. Chaidet is responsible for reading comprehension and writing. For me, reading comprehension, writing skill, and internal examination are all this down. Mr. Thea upon reading comprehension and English camera point, Ajahn Aifa, writing skill, we know a teacher, they have to teach listening and speaking. We are speaking supplementary material, especially about culture and conversation. Here, 2008-2011, we teach following the course book because the course book is, is changed by the Ministry of Education. We develop some related cheat work for our students. 
we do not mention about the entrance examination or national test anymore because we think that the course book is the is the best, but the result were uncertainty. How? You can see 2008 to 2011, the score compared with the university demonstration school level, minus, minus, plus, and minus. It's not stable because we do not mention anything about the test. But after that, 2012 to 2014, we set up the goal that the score must be at least 1% upper. And we revised the test back for 10 years and categorized into major of the test. We discovered that there are six parts of the test, situational or dialogue, error identification, writing ability, especially gamma structure, vocabulary, reading comprehension, and sentence comprehension. We set up the new framework for teaching. Dr. Chayade introducing new vocabulary, 500 vocabulary for grade 10 students, 700 vocabulary for grade 11 students, and 1,000 for grade 12 students. We introduced a lot of vocabulary to my students. And he also gave the introduction of presentation skill because you have to present yourself before you are passed to or enrolled to the university. I, myself, use the textbook emphasize on reading comprehension. For grade 12, I also mentioned about reading comprehension and do the test week, week by week. I let them do the test week by week and discover 50 words, new words for each week. I set up the new subject, English for communication, only for 6252 and 62 to let them practice entrance examination, only entrance examination, to get them to, to let them get familiar with the test. Ajahn Tutiyapon made the vocabulary notebook and introducing more knowledge about the examination. Ajahn Aifa set up the 10 minute with on the test and practice the test before the end of the time. Filipino teacher, give the student many tests related to the structure of the test and give them the activity listening and speaking related to the topic of the test and give five vocabulary. Let them practice in the class. And you can see the point. Form two. 2012 to 2014, the score is higher, plus one, plus one, and plus two. It means that we are in the right path to improve my student achievement. So we continue to develop the framework. 2015 to 2017, the score went dramatically up. We feel happy about that. But we rearranged the curriculum. In the past, we teased the English for communication only four, two, five, two, and six, two. Now we teach in all classes. Why? We would like all of my students to learn to have the technique to practice their English before to sit for the test. And we also emphasize on the order test. You can see the score. Plus three, plus six, and plus four. The score went up. You can see clearly. So for this is the last period, 2018 to 2020. Dr. Chaidet, now we changed our school curriculum completely. Dr. Shade set up the, sub, uh, the, the new subject, analytical reading, first to six. I myself.
okay, minus minus plus and minus. But when we try to set up the framework, all the score in the uh, in the plus from 2012 uh, to 2020. And this is the, the level, the, the, the charge one, the charge. You can see that when you see about national level, this is the, the score each year. 30 is the 30 point, 23, 19, 21, 22, 35, 23, 29, 29. It's very score, very low from 100. The total is 100. But you can see from my school, 40 plus. We are happy, we are happy. So after the research that we discovered that number one, you have to develop your English material. You have to choose the appropriate topic, authentic text related to the old next page. You have to ask your student that which topic that you would like to learn, not your topic, not teacher topic. It must be the student topic because if they would like to learn something that they love, they will study more with us. Do not choose from your topic, from your mind. The second one, class activity should be authentic and motivate. Try to motivate them to start. And sometimes individual work is required, not in the whole class. In the whole class, group work, power work, individual work, and not only keep your students sit in the classroom, maybe let them out from the classroom, go to the library, go to the canteen, go to the football field, go to the basketball field to make them alert, to make them mot uh, to motivate them to study. And you have to think about learning style of your student. You have to set the lesson, give the lesson to meet the learning style. And the last one, you have to change your role. Not only speak in front of the class load, you have to be the facilitator. You have to support your student. If they ask the question, you have immediately go and answer them immediately. I think everything we do for something greater, but practice is the one that makes you improvement. And practice is the thing that you do once you good, but it's not the thing that make you good. So try to make yourself, your department, your colleague, your student to be the good one and try to. And I would like to suggest the five C's for success. Cognizance, communication, coordination, coordination, cooperation and collaboration. Work with your colleague. This class clarify, share, suggest, and open up your mind. Because if you can do that, you will have the good teamwork. If you have the good teamwork, you will have the same goal or the same object. Because our object, objective is to improve our student achievement in academics. So if you can work together, you go in the same way, your student will get the benefit from you. Okay? Thank you. If you have any question, <laughs> I, I am happy to answer. Thank you so much, Dr. Siti Kimkel. It was indeed a very compelling presentation and daily work routine and school best practices. So yes, as just what uh, Dr. Siti has mentioned, do we have any questions or qualifica clarifications from our lovely educators? Any questions, dear participants? I love I love this moment. Just like we are <laughs> the, I, I like we are in the classroom. Any question? No. But when you are when you are the teacher, you always ask the question from the student. <laughs>
<laughs> exactly right. Okay. okay. Never mind. Maybe if you have any question, you can, can ask me to ask her this to me now. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. All right. Um, Ajahn Suti, would you mind to stop sharing your uh, presentation so then okay. I can proceed to the awarding of the certificate? Thank okay. you, Doc. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, so before, yeah, let me read the content of the certificate. Certificate of recognition. This certificate is presented to Dr. Sutikam Kell as a keynote speaker with the topic boosting test scores from daily work routine to school best of practice. We hereby acknowledge the exceptional proficiency and dedication you demonstrated in the field of teaching English to speakers of other languages. Your exemplary skills in communication, linguistics, expertise, and unwavering commitment to promoting language education have significantly contributed to the advancement of English language learning worldwide. Your impactful contributions as a TESO speaker have inspired and empowered educators and learners alike, fostering cultural exchange, linguistic diversity, and cr cross-curricular understanding. Through your engaging presentations, workshops, and seminars, you have effectively shared valuable insights, innovative strategies, and best practices, enriching the professional development of educators and enhancing the language acquisition journey of learners across diverse contexts. In recognition of your outstanding achievements and invaluable contributions to the TESOL community, we proudly present this certificate as a token of our appreciation and admiration. Accorded this 11th day of February, 2024. Signed, Carmela M. Salenga, President, Streps Prism International, and Dr. Roxan Ruby Camarosa, Executive Consultant, Strap Prism International. Thank you so much again, Doc. We look forward to having you as one as one of our speakers at our future events. And congratulations. Thank you.